All right, here we go. Jumping straight into our big question. What is Web3? Well, Web3 is a vision for the internet. It's a World Wide Web that's based on blockchain technology. We'll dive into exactly how blockchain works in just a moment. We'll even go into why so many people are hyped up about the potential of Web3. There's a lot of money being poured into these cryptocurrencies. Why is that? We'll get into it. But first, it'll help us to get a little bit of a history lesson on the current web. How did we get to Web 3? What about Web 1 and 2? Why do we need a third version of the web? The story starts in the early 1990s. This is when the internet started taking off and began being adopted in households by regular people instead of mostly being used by governments and universities. The amount of users that could access the internet was about to start increasing very quickly. This early internet started off with groups of communities that often shared common interests. Check out this website from 1995. Back then, the internet had different applications as well. If I was interested in Star Trek, I could communicate with other Star Trek fans on forums that lived on Usenet. This Usenet was a globally distributed, decentralized network of discussion forums. It was mostly run by a community of users. Notice these words like decentralized and globally distributed that apply to both Web3 and this early internet. But hold on, we're not at Web3 yet. What we're describing is Web 1.0, where we had companies like Yahoo and tools like Internet Explorer and Netscape Navigator. With these tools, we could share information with each other, but once something was published, it was pretty static. Most of the web, like we just saw, was these static HTML pages. They wouldn't change or interact with you. The web was basically read-only. Fifteen years passed, and by the year 2005, this idea of Web 2.0 started to gain more and more popularity. This is the internet that we're all familiar with. We got applications like Facebook, Netflix, and YouTube. Web 2.0 was a more interactive web that focused on user interfaces that both looked good and were easy to use. As things got easier to use, pretty much everyone, including parents and grandparents, started using our internet. The focus became on content generated by users. We could now read and watch data that was published, but also create our own data and publish it to these giant platforms like YouTube. The beauty of this was that we could all now participate in what was happening on the internet. But, and there's always a but, things became centralized in these internet giants. The current internet is dominated by the Googles, the Apples, and the Microsofts of the world. So things became more usable as the internet spread to our phones, our laptops, and TVs, but this came at a cost. The loss of power of the individual. Users like you and I don't have control over our own data. We don't really know 
how it's stored or what happens to it when it goes to these platforms. Have you ever heard the phrase, if you're not paying for the product, you are the product? Think about it. If the product is free, you are the product. What this means is, if you have a company or a website that's working hard to deliver content to you without asking for some payment, they're probably using the data you're giving them, both directly and indirectly, and selling it to advertisers and other interested parties so that they can make their money. Take Facebook, for example. The company has spent millions of dollars into developing their site and keeping it running, but they've amassed a wealth of billions of dollars by allowing advertisers to target specific users with specific ads. This is the prevalent business model of the current internet. Now, this doesn't apply to all sites, but the point is, it's impossible for you to know for sure exactly what these sites are doing. You have to put your trust into the privacy policy of the company. You have no way of seeing what actually happens behind the scenes. In fact, some of these internet giants have gotten so large, it's likely there's no one person even inside the company that understands how everything fits together. In response to this internet that's run by monolithic, multi-billion dollar companies, around the year 2020, Web 3.0 started gaining traction. The idea with Web 3 is we'll have decentralized applications that live on the blockchain. The community will once again be in charge of running the applications and organizations that make up the internet. Kind of like those discussion forums we had on Usenet back in 1995 and earlier. There will be no need for these giant corporations that own centralized platforms with millions and millions of users because we'll be able to interact with each other on the blockchain directly. One of the big goals of Web3 is to challenge the dominance of these giant companies and their platforms. Just like in Web 1.0, the internet will be decentralized once again. At the same time, we'll keep the interactivity of Web 2.0 with the addition of some added security and transparency. That's the Web3 vision. All of this will be based around blockchain, this technology that was originally introduced all the way back in 1991, but only really started gaining attention in 2008 when someone named Satoshi Nakamoto introduced Bitcoin. So how exactly would all of this work? What's so special about Bitcoin? Will Web3 succeed in its goals? We need to start by learning a little bit more about blockchain. And on that note, I'll see you in the next video.